What's better for gains, training harder but less frequently or training more frequently but less hard? Watch this. Our next caller is Ian from North Carolina. What's up, Ian? How can we help you? Hey there. Very nice to meet you guys. I wanted to say two quick things. First, I wanted to say a huge thank you from all the people that you are impacting their lives in a positive way for which you should all be very proud. Thank you. Thank you. We're man. super proud that. of ourselves. Stop <laughs> <it>. <laughs> <laughs> Ruined it, Sal. Yeah. And uh, the second is, I listen to you guys um, at like 2x speed on the podcast, so hearing your voices like this is like hearing in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to speed it up for you. No problem. All right. There you go. My uh, question is, um, I need to map, run MAPS performance three times, and should I do it phase one three times, then phase two? Or should I go through the whole thing and just start over? Yeah, that's well. that's actually a very easy one to answer. But can I ask you uh, what's with the three times? Is there a reason why? Yeah, why why ask this question? Well, I I guess I should step back a little bit. Um, I started listening to you guys. I don't know about three years ago, and um, if you came to me and you said you're working out ten times too much, and while you're working out, you're resting a hundred times too little, and you're also eating half as much as you should. I would have thought you guys are out of your minds, but that's pretty much true um, across every point. I was doing everything wrong. So um, I listened a while and I uh, got anabolic and I started following it, but I was still doing too much. I was doing too much trigger. I was doing too often and um, I was getting results, but not great results. And I think I was listening to one of the podcasts and listening to uh, the one where you're talking about the five by five. So I decided to try it. And so all I did was squat, dead, overhead, pull up, bench. And I did just at 125 reps. And for whatever reason, I, I was only hitting workouts every fifth day. And I just saw like a light switch just went off. And I finally got to the adaptive stage. So it finally started to make sense. So even in anabolic, I did the pre-phase for like three months. You guys say three weeks, but I mean, I'm learning these exercises, even though I've been an athlete my whole life. Um, all of this stuff was new. So now I'm going into performance and this stuff is all so new. Uh-huh. Um, for instance, um, when I did a Turkish get up the first, first rep, I had to take a nap because it was just so, so new. Hmm. So that's why I'm, that's kind of why I'm asking, should I really focus on perfecting the movements and, and getting through each phase correctly and, and right? Or should I just go through the whole thing? That's a really cool. Okay. Now this is a yeah. cool question. I like that. I and like I like that mentality. I do like the mentality too. That makes a lot more sense now why you would even want to do something like that. And I think that's a great advice for a lot of people listening, because I think sometimes people just move from, you know, program hop, you know, all the time and they don't ever spend enough time getting good at some of the movements. And that's where the, where the the gains and the results really start to pile on as you get better at it. Yeah. Now, that being said, um, you'd be better off just running through it and then starting over and running through it. Yeah. And you, you'll get the same benefits of getting better at it and practicing it. Plus, uh, you're, you're not getting stuck in the same uh, rep range and phase for too long to where you see diminishing yeah, results. Yeah, there, there's, a, there's a bit, I think there's a little bit of a misconception, Ian, that you think that phase one is easier than phase two and phase three, that it's progressing you from less hard to more hard or less challenging to more challenging. That's not how the phases work. They're just different forms of adaptation. Yeah, different pursuits. Now, MAPS Anabolic is different because pre-phase is literally designed to get people ready to do MAPS Anabolic. And I did that because that was the first MAPS program. We didn't have MAPS Starter. We didn't have MAPS Resistance back then. It was just MAPS Anabolic. And I said, well, you know, somebody goes right into phase one, but they haven't been, you know, lifting weights. Like, they need to practice some of these lifts for a little while first. And that's why I created pre-phase. But with MAPS Performance, it's not like that. Phase one, two, three, four, they're all... Different. They're all good. They're all different. You're not necess- you're not progressing in the sense that you know you're going from easier to harder. They're just totally different. So I would go through it as it's laid out and then go through it again as it's laid out. Now, one thing you're gonna find is a lot of similar movements in each of the phases. So you're gonna be practicing some of the most important, you know, movements throughout the whole program. So don't worry about, you know, the lack of practice type of deal. And then the last thing I'd like to ask is has to do with your diet and sleep. 
You said you tried a Turkish get up, get up and you had to take a nap. <laughs> um, so you, 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 there's something, something's going on here. Or you worked out once every five days and you got good results. That tells me that your recovery isn't super mm. great, and that might have to do with other factors like stress or sleep or hormones or something like that. Am I ringing mm. some bells here? Um, maybe. I think it was, you know, really I was just doing too much. I mean, when I was training, to, to put it in perspective – I was doing, I was running, I guess the equivalent of running one to two marathons a day, five times a week, and then racing on the weekends. Holy I mean, it was, it was just, yeah, way, way too much. Wow. So now are you doing yeah. anything like that now while you're following mass performance? No, I, I mean, literally I just walk and I do performance oh. every fifth day. I mean, it was really when I went to the fifth, every fifth day that I allowed my bad body to adapt. Yeah. That's when I saw, I mean, and the thing that like triggered is my appetite just went through the roof. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long, how long were you doing that crazy regime for of the running a marathon every day? Uh, well, that was at the height of it. So, I mean, I was doing triathlons after I finished, I was a, originally a swimmer and I did swimming in college and all of that. And then, um, as you would call it, I did, um, you know, weightlifting, with aerobics or speed weightlifting. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, so strength training is like a completely new shock to the system. Yeah. And it sounds oh, like, God, yeah. and it sounds like you had to give your body a little time to recover from what you were doing before. Yes. I think it, it really yeah. took my body time to, to recover and kind of say, my, my body was basically saying, Oh really? You're going to let us, you know, recover and actually adapt. <laughs> and, and it wasn't until it actually just like, okay, we'll let you do it. Oh, well, excellent. Well, well yeah. you're in a great place now. This is exciting. Yeah, it is. I, and again, follow it the way it's laid out and just go through it, you know, two or three times. I think that's the best way to do it. Okay. So you, you think that even though I'm going like every four or five days, um, that uh, they'll be able to, to really learn the exercises and not necessarily, because you guys talk about the CNS connection and, and sort of learning the movements. Okay. So I'm going to give you some other advice and try this instead of going once every five days and you're not doing mm -hmm. an additional workouts, right? You said you're just walking. Walking and trigger or, you know, just the, 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 the minor, um, Got it. actually I, I do, um, mobility stuff on mobility the other days. Okay. So yeah. instead of once every five days doing a foundational workout, do them Monday, Wednesday, Friday and reduce the intensity. Okay. Just re reduce the intensity a lot. Yeah. Um, and that way you could do the frequency of the workouts. Yeah. So it, it, that's, and that will probably feel b better on your body than keeping high intensity with less frequency. And and you already have the right mindset and thought process of like, you you know, you want to get good at these movements. So just think that way as you're going to back off the intensity so much. Don't worry about it. If it's not mm -hmm. super heavy or really hard, that's okay. You, you're you trying to practice. You want to get good at the movements. I think if you you scale way back on the intensity, yeah. uh, you could easily do three times a week and not be anywhere near overtaxing your body. Uh, and you're gonna get you're gonna get better at the movements a lot faster. I think that, I think you'll see some great results from that. I would love Ian. Are, are you on Facebook by chance? Not much, but um, well, you have I have one. heard about your form. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're, I'm gonna have Doug get you in there, so we'll we'll add you for free, so we can. And I'd love to kind of hear your process as you're going through that way you can reach out to us and let us know what you're noticing or if you have any questions along the way um i'll have doug give you free access to that and then if you could try and stay in touch with us maybe every couple weeks or whatever just let us know how you're doing and, and what's going on and if we need to make any sort of subtle tweaks we can along the way sure that sounds great thank right, you sir. very much for the advice thanks for calling in Ian. all right ian thank you all the best yeah i think i think he went from yeah, crazy what? training yeah. Yeah. to resistance shock. training, yeah. and the reason why he started responding after training once every five days, he finally gave his body time to recover from what he was doing. Well, before. it's funny, like the Turkish getup, it doesn't like look that crazy in yeah. terms of like, but it just requires yeah. so much focus, and you're, I could see how that would be like, uh, you know, a real shock to the body to where it fatigue you. Oh yeah, especially if you've never done it. I mean, shit, I've said this before in the podcast that uh, there'd be times when that would be my workout. I just practiced. I'd do five sets of yeah. practicing the Turkish get up. Literally and, involves like everything. Yeah, yeah and you yeah. Can actually get a decent workout just doing that. So, but I love. I, I you know, you gotta love hearing that about somebody who was running triathlons yep. and marathons and, and kind of hammering his body 
coming to the realization that he's probably way over training, scaling all the way back to where he's only training once every five days, and boom, all of a sudden the body responds. Yeah. I mean, if that isn't like an aha moment for you, I don't know what would be. Yep. And then the path that he's on, the direction he's going, and the thought process of, I want to get good at these movements and, and having that attitude going into this routine. Mm -hmm. Very excited to see where this guy's yeah. at in six months to a yeah, year. Yeah, but I would say Definitely. if you're over training, uh, the first thing to reduce is intensity. Right. That would be the first place I would look. Then you can look at volume and then frequency. Oh, no, that's good because like he said, like you want to get good at it, so you want to keep repeating yep. movements, but just bring the intensity down allows you to do that and get good at and it. And people don't realize that you, <laughs> the workout can still be very effective even if you're not sweating your right. ass off or struggling yeah. to Grunting move. Grunting and yeah. like, yeah. Like struggling, struggling to move through. the weight. So, no, great. That was great advice. Yeah, totally. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.